What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, athletenext.com. Today I wanna to talk to you about how to build a wider back. Now let's face it, the back, as you can see here, has a lot of different muscles. But when we're talking about width, we're really talking about the ones that run east to west and around the outside of the body. We know that the rhomboids also do that, but they're more on the inside of the scapula. We wanna talk about the ones that are gonna actually create the width from the outer torso. And there's actually three main ones. Again, you can take a look here. We're talking about the lats, the teres major, and the teres minor. And actually, even though they sound the same, the last two, they actually have two very different functions. The best way to do it is for me to just walk you around the gym here and show you how you can make these tweaks to the exercise you're already doing to hit those different areas. All right, so first of all, on a lat pull down machine, if we wanted to hit the lats, Understanding the anatomy here, we know that the lats are a huge muscle that attach to the spine and also down to the pelvis, and they come up and around to the arm. So if we wanna get them and get them through a full range of motion, you gotta get that arm up and away from you as much as you can. You can see them actually put on stretch when you do that. Well, the best way to do that is with an underhand grip on a pull down, because you can see right away, it puts us in this position where our arms are out in front of us up high into flexion at the shoulder. And now when I come down and back, I wanna really try to squeeze my elbows into my sides, which is called adduction, because that's gonna maximally activate the lats into a fully contracted state. That being said, let's say you get too bicep dominant. When you get in this position here, you tend to pull too much with your biceps. You can go overhand, right, but keep it narrow, because you're gonna see why in a second. And when you go narrow, you actually have another option here too. You take your arms, they're still out in front of your body. I pull down, and as I get to about this position here, I drop down and back with one side. All right, we call this the rocking pull down. Down, back, and around. And what we're getting from this is an even more intense contraction because we get that adduction and extension behind the body. Adduction and extension back behind the body, which will really light up the lats. But what about the teres major? It's no less important when we want to develop that full thickness. Well, what you have to do there is you got to get that ar the arms away from the body. Try to take the lats a little bit out of it by getting less adduction here and get more abduction. Get the arm away from the body. So you can do that by going wide, right? If we're in narrow, they're going to stay narrow. If we go wide, they're going to be wide. And this tends to put us in a little bit of internal rotation, which is a better way to activate the teres major. It's not dangerous internal rotation because as you'll see right here, my arms are positioned at 45 degrees in front of my body. You can see that they're not way back here. They're out in front, which puts our shoulder in a safe position. But instantly, when I pull down from there, now you can see the teres major is definitely popping and doing more of the work than it was doing before. That's how you would do that. Okay, now if we wanna get teres minor, I mentioned they sound similar, but they have very different functions. You gotta go from internal rotation to external rotation. This is a rotator cuff muscle. So if you wanna get this, you need to figure out a way to externally rotate. Like with all external rotation exercises, or rotator cuff exercises. And we can do that with what we call a face pull down. I'll go just a little bit lighter. Here, we grab underhand like this, and as we go down to the pull down, just a little bit. Remember, these are weaker muscles, but they still have to be trained. I go underhand, and now when I pull down, I pull this way, here, 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 here. So I'm going into external rotation at the shoulder. I'm still pulling down. I'm still pulling the arm back down and behind me here. But you can see that it's that teres minor here that's actually doing the work. Now, let me quickly run you through a few other options because I like to give guys more options, especially if they don't have a pull down machine. And those same positions, by the way, can be transferred right over to a, to a pull-up bar if that's what you had, right? You can still do the same variations of the hand positions. But here, if you wanna get that Terry's Major, overhand grip, arm away from your side, it's called a Meadows Row. Right here, grab, up, and down. Again, less adduction, less tight to your side, more away from your side. And you can see again, that Terry's Major, it's doing a lot of the work. If I wanted to get more lat, change my body, I come over here. I get tight to the bar, change my positioning. Now, what I allow myself to do is grab here, sit back, 
So I get my arm up in front of my body a little bit, right? Here, we'll put my arm on greater stretch of the lat. So I sit back, up in row, down and back. Row, sit your ass back. Remember, create more distance between your arm and your pelvis. So by sitting back, that's what I do. And then I get my lat fully engaged. Lastly, I come over here. I wanna grab my rope and I need this. Over here, I come over here. Hold this for a second. I do a one arm lat pull down with a cable. The best way to hit your lat. You can drop your pelvis down and back and get your arm up and away from you here to create great separation. And actually, as you can see, great activation here of the lats and great stretch. All right, just like that. But finally, you know I wouldn't end a single video of mine without talking about the face pull. Because the face pull happens to be one of the absolute best exercises you can do for that terrace minor. Remember, external rotation. Attach two ropes so you have more room to move here. I get in position right here. Set myself up. I'm going to pull my hands and elbows back. Let the hands beat the elbows. You want external rotation at the shoulder. If you do it like this, your elbows are winning that race. You're instantly rotated. Don't do it that way. Come back with the hands win. And if you come around the back, you can see the muscles there in the teres minor. A lot of muscles in the back work in here, but they're doing a lot of the work because of that external rotation at the shoulder. And hell, why not? One more exercise while we're at it. If I just had dumbbells and I wanted to get external rotation, we have a W raise, which is basically forming a W with the dumbbells like this, except bent over. So if I'm in this position, I'm gonna row them and create that W. Row, create the W. Row, in the W. Okay, just like that. So, it's so a lot of options, but if you understand the principles and the anatomy and why we're doing what we're doing and how we tweak it, you understand that it really does matter. It will change significantly the muscles that you're targeting and ultimately give you the best chance to make the widest back possible because you're developing all the muscles that make that back as wide as possible. If you're looking for step-by-step -step programs where we never overlook the science because it all matters and we build it in step-by-step, -step, you can find them all over at athlonx.com. In the meantime, if you found the video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what else you want me to cover and I'll do my best to do that for you. And if you haven't already done so, guys, click subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.